يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his aid and his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of us and from our evil actions Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, it is from the nature and the characteristic of the human being that he learns from those around him. He learns from <coughs> others. So in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, we're told, a person will follow the religion of a close friend. So you will learn from your close friend, you will end up following their characteristics, even their religion. This, so that person will be a role model and an example to you. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, every child is born upon fitrah, believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a state of purity. But his parents make him a firework, a fire worshipper, a Christian or a Jew. This is the role of the parent in the life of the child. So we learn from others. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy has sent a group of people that we learn from. They are the Anbiya or the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the living example of the revealed scriptures. They are the perfection in religion. They show they are our role models. And the role model of this Ummah is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he is our role model, he is our guide, and he is our example. So in the khutbah today, we will look at his life, his status, what he came to offer, because when you choose a role model, you look at why should this person be a role model, what's his status like? You ask, what's he going to teach me? What's he going to offer me? Then you ask, does he live up to his message? And what has his impact been? So this is what we will look at. We will look at his status, his offering, his characteristics, and his impact upon this entire world. So you look at the status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we said the group of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down are the Anbiya. Amongst the Anbiya, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has got the unique and the, one, the highest rank. So we see in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, my example and the example of the prophets is of a man, he builds a beautiful house. The people, they go around the house amazed at its beauty. But there is a brick missing. And they say, oh, if only that brick had been here, complete, been here to complete the house, I am that brick. I am that brick. So the prophets in themselves are beautiful. But the focus, there's something not quite, there's something is missing. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a beautification even of the Anbiya. <coughs> We see in the journey of Is Al-Isra wa Al-Miraj, where Rasulullah sallallahu went to the heavens, he was the Imam of the Anbiya. He led all of the Prophets in Salah. We see on Yawm al qiyamah on the Day of Judgment, even the Anbiya, the Prophets will be saying, Nafsi, Nafsi, the senior Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the likes of Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Nafsi, myself, myself. Then they will go to Rasulullah sallallahu he will say, my ummah, my ummah. And he will be allowed to intercede for his ummah. So on the day when the prophets are petrified for themselves, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be worried about his ummah and be allowed to intercede for his ummah. This is the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him as the final messenger gifted him with the Qur'an, the revealed scripture, right till the end of time. He is the first to enter Jannah. He is given the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means the praiseworthy one. And truly it is praiseworthy. We say his name. Hundreds of years later, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
and you praise him. This is the rank of Rasulullah <coughs> The Mu'addin in the Adhan, when he just called the Adhan, mentioned the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In our Salah, when we say Durood from Ibrahim Alaihi and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the status given to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You look at his status amongst the people around him, it is not an exaggeration to say his companions would give up their lives for Rasulullah Literally, they would give up their lives. There's a well-known account of a woman in the Battle of Uhud. They say to her, your father has died, your brother has died, your husband has died. Imagine she's got no one. Her answer, how is Muhammad Sallallahu Everybody else pales into significance. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he is beaten in the early days of Makkah. Beaten, nearly beaten to death. His mother around him, she's worried, Petra, how's my son? The first thing he says when consciousness returns to him, how is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is the way of the companions. Literally, they would sacrifice everything for him. Even his enemies, they did not have a bad word to say about him. They could not say anything bad about him. The likes of Abu Jahl, they couldn't find anything bad. They said, he always speaks the truth. This is what Abu Jahl's arch enemy would say. He always speaks the truth. There was nothing bad they could say about him. One time the leader of Quraysh, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu who was with his companions. He then goes back and he reports to the Quraysh, what is he like? He says, this man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this man, when he looks at his companions, they all look down. This is respect, this is other. Sometimes when you're with your father, your uncle, you look respect. He said, when Rasulullah looks at them, they all look down. When he speaks, a hush comes over all. Everyone becomes silenced when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks. When he makes wudu, they always come to fight each other to grab the water of his wudu. This is the rank, the way they saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his status. When you look at an example, a role model, look at how the people regarded him. In the famous incident where the king of Rome, Heraclius is there, and Abu Sufyan comes in, and he asks Abu, Suf Abu Sufyan, describe him, what was his message? Abu Sufyan describes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Heraclius the king says, if he was here today, I would wash his feet. Imagine, this is not just anybody, this is like an important person. After hearing his description and hearing his message, he said, if he was here today, I would wash his feet. This is the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran refers to him many times over, obey Allah and obey the Rasul. This is status, this is Quran, this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obey Allah and obey the Rasul. If you differ in anything, turn back to Allah and his Rasul. If you love Allah, follow me, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will forgive you and Allah will love you. So if you love Allah, follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran honors and raises his status. It is a condition of our Iman to believe and follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the pillars of Iman is belief in the Anbiya. And the greatest in the file of Anbiya, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember the exam questions. The most important questions you will be asked when we enter the grave. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was your messenger? This is the status of Rasulullah in the grave. When judgment begins for the individual, the question will be asked, who was the messenger? Who was your example? Who was your Rasul? And can we say that Muhammad is our messenger? Because a messenger you follow his message, you listen to him, you imitate and you copy him. Can we truly say the Prophet Muhammad is our example, our Rasul? None of us truly believes till we love him more than we love our own selves. Let alone your father, your wife, your children, more than your own self. We have to love Rasulullah This is his status. 
This is his rank. Having looked at that, so you see the status of a person, you look, why should I copy them? Listen to the status of Rasulullah, we've heard this. Then you look at, what's he offering me? What is he come to make me? What was he going to give me? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the embodiment of Islam. Aisha radiallahu anha described his character, he was the Quran. You want to see the Quran, you want to see Islam, look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's offering us, through following Islam, an eternity in paradise. The least person in Jannah will have this entire world and ten times it's over. Today we look at the people with power and prestige and kings and we want to be like this, want to be like them, want to have the palaces and the cars and the, and the clothing and the jewelry. The one who follows Rasulullah sallallahu <laughs> worships Allah upon Tawheed and enters into Jannah, he will have what is in the entire world and ten times his life. This is what he's come to offer. This is his messenger. This is his message of Tawheed, of La Ilaha. This is what he's giving. This is the exchange. When you give up this dunya, what he's promising you in the next life, an eternity. Not five years, not ten, not fifty, not hundred. Forever. Youthfulness. You'll be a youth forever. You'll be content forever. You will never feel anxious. Never feel worried, never be depressed, never feel hungry, never feel thirsty, never feel tired. Everything you can have, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined. This is what he's putting on the table and he's offering it to you. And he's saying to you, oh man, follow my way. This is the promise of truth and you will live for eternity in the unimaginable happiness and bliss. Likewise, he's warning you, you leave my way. You don't follow the Tawheed, believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You leave my way, you leave the promise of Jannah. As the disbelievers in generality, we say they'll enter Jahannam. When you leave the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this is the risk you are taking. The risk of leaving an eternity of bliss and happiness to punishment and adab and torture and terror like you can't imagine in this world. You can't imagine. You look at the worst person in this world, the most horrific punishment and torture and suffering. This is nothing. The least, per the least in Jahannam. He will have the embers of, not even the fire, the embers like the ashes of the fire under his feet and his brain will boil. And he will think, I am the worst punishment in Jahannam. Yet he is the least punishment in Jahannam. The least punishment. This is the way you left the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is Akhirah. He's coming to you in this life and he's offering you the perfect way of Islam. Life. Islam is perfection, yes, in the Akhirah. Islam is perfection in this life as well. Don't forget that. The Prophet ﷺ is telling you how to deal with the dunya and the challenges. How to be content in this life. He's telling you how to have shukr and how to have uh, sabr and how to have tawakkul. He's telling you how to live. One of the religious people said, if the kings and princes knew what we had, they would go to war with us. Meaning, I am so happy I am so content if the kings and princes knew what I had, they would want to fight me. What do I have? I have Islam. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says what? Jannah is in my heart. What can my enemies do to me? Imagine, if you kill me, this is jihad, this is death, jihad in the path of Allah. If you send me out, you exile me, I get to see the world. If you lock me up, I do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is in my heart. This is this dunya, the promise of Allah, the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not just happiness in the next life. You'll be the happiest person in this life. The long, dismal faces, they will go. You look at the people today, no one is content. Islam has come to offer you in this life peace and contentmentness. 
The perfect life in this life is Islam. This is the offering of Rasulullah sallallahu He's telling, look at the offering, what he's come with. Be good, be kind, be helpful. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't backbite. This is the message of Islam, all good qualities. Don't drink, don't womanize, don't do drugs, don't earn from haram. This is the beautiful message of Islam. This is what Islam has come to offer with, the beautiful life. You want to be the best father, the best husband, the best work colleague. This is the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is what he's come to offer you in this life. Not just the akhirah, but in this life as well. Perfection and happiness in this dunya is the message of Islam. He's come to offer you a spiritual system that puts your heart at ease. In the busyness and the dirt and the, of the difficulties of this dunya, you will be a king in your heart. He's come to offer you a spiritual system, a social system which respects our elder, has mercy upon the old ones and compassion upon the youth. He's come to offer an education system rooted in the Quran and Sunnah. He's come to offer you a legal system based upon the Sharia. That Islam is a complete package and the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate and absolute and correct way of life. This is the Sharia, this is the law. He's come to come with a legal system, the legal system of Islam. He's come to offer you an economic system based upon zakah and charity that eradicates riba and interest that is humiliating individuals and communities and nations. He's come to offer you a political system under the Khalifa and the leadership of Islam. Not what we are given today. This democratic system where everyone is told we must follow this way. Look at what democracy has offered. Look at Brexit. Britain is a laughing stock of the entire world. When you put one of the most important decisions down to the common person and the people who's presenting it, the politicians, half of them are liars. This is the mess you get in and the world laughs at you. Islam comes and offers you a political leadership system based upon the Quran and the Sunnah, based upon wise and pious people leading you and guiding you. Rasulullah has come with a complete package. Spiritual, economic, legal, social, political. This is the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qoli hadha wa astaghfiru nadihi wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu wa lakfuru rahim. Move on and look at now. Look at the person. Look at his truthfulness. Look at the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the next thing. We've seen his status. We've seen what he's come to offer us. Look at how truthful he was. Even before prophethood, he never lied. He was called Al Amin. Imagine somebody in their community, you refer to him, that person, he is Al Amin. He's a truthful, he never tells a lie. Can you imagine how honest that person be? This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam before prophethood. He was the most truthful. He never lied. He never gambled. Everyone was doing it. It wasn't forbidden. Everyone was gambling. Everyone was womanizing. Everyone was doing shirk. Rasulullah never did any of these things before prophethood. When Quraysh were going to go to war about who puts a black stone back on the Kaaba, Rasulullah mediated, everyone immediately followed his decision. What this was his character before prophethood. Imagine what he's going to be like after prophethood has been revealed to him. He is that person. He is the bravest of people in Mecca. In the early stages, where the Muslims are getting persecuted and they are getting tortured, harm after harm, even Rasulullah, they try to harm him. In this time, the Muslim, they go to Abyssinia. 
In any other situation, the leader would be the first to leave. Let us protect our leader. Let us make sure our leader is safe. He is the first to leave and go to Abyssinia. Not Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many of the Muslims go, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stays in Mecca. When the Hijrah takes place and the Muslims are leaving, the brave ones and the strong ones, they are all leaving Mecca. Who is the final one? The final one to stay in Mecca? <coughs> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is him living his message. This is his character. When you look at forgiving people, when he goes back into Mecca, he is the most forgiving of people. You have the likes of him. She, she arranged for the assassination of his uncle. She tried to chew the liver of his uncle. This is how much hatred she had for Rasulullah And Rasulullah had great love for his uncle Hamza. He cried profusely when burying him. This woman, him, you're forgiven today. Abu Sufyan, Wahishi who threw the spear. All of these people, you are forgiven. This is the forgiveness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his character, who everybody tries to defile and put a look at his seerah, look at his life. He is rahmatun lil alameen. He is a mercy to mankind. He is a mercy he, to the environment, telling us, plant trees, you'll get sadaqah. Don't chop down fruit-bearing trees. He is a mercy to the environment. Don't waste water, even when you're doing wudu. Don't be cruel to animals. Raise the orphan, you'll be like this with me in Jannah. Be good to your wife. They used to, they used to treat their wife like commodities. They used to bury their daughters alive. He says, bring up two daughters properly, you'll enter into Jannah. He was a Rahmah to the environment, to animals, to people, to Muslims and non-Muslims. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So This was his character. So when you looked at his character, let us conclude on his impact on society. Look at the impact that he has. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the people, they were stooped in shirk. When the Kaaba itself was full of idols. Imagine the Kaaba that we sanctify and that we honor. The Kaaba itself was full of idols. People would go around the tawaf naked, smearing, smearing blood on the walls of the Kaaba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he purified the Kaaba. He established Tawheed. He destroyed the shirk. He brought together the Arabs. The Arabs, nobody wanted to rule them. They were always arguing and fighting and disunified. Nobody wanted to know them. He brought them together as a brotherhood, as an ummah. He brought down the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, years, decades after, would fall on its knees because of the message of one man in a desert in Mecca, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, one fifth of the world's population we hang on to his entire every word from the huge things to the small things we stay hungry we fast we pray five times a lot we go to mecca why because of rasulullah the message the impact sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is the impact he has had there has not been an individual that has changed the earth like muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we conclude then, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Is he our role model? Is he our example? What is the answer to this? How many of us, we have read the seerah? How many of us, we follow the sunnah of Rasulullah This is why he is a messenger. He's come to give us a message. Most of us today, we're following the secular way around. This is the reality. We've abandoned the fundamentals of ibadah like salah, the most precious thing to Muhammad sallallahu as salah. Many of us have abandoned this. We say to a person, grow the beard. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu He says, the world is on fire. Why are you telling me about the beard for? What kind of reaction? This is part of Rasulullah lifestyle. Rasulullah came with a complete thing. 
from the political, economic, low ecosystem for the entire world, down to the way in which you eat food, down to the hand that you use, down to the way that you sit. This is the offering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is the sunnah. Those that honor him will be honored throughout time. Wallahi, those that honor him will be honored throughout time. Where are we today? In Masjid Umar. Where do we get the name Umar from? From the companion Umar bin al-Khattab. If it wasn't for his Islam, before Islam, he had a certain character, a certain way, history would have forgotten him. Today, 1400 years later, in a town thousands of miles away, we name a masjid. Why? Masjid Umar, Masjid Abu Bakr, Masjid Bilal. Imagine. Why? Because these were people, they followed the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Bilal radiallahu anhu, a black Abyssinian slave, no one would give him the time of day. Today, we name our masajid after him. Why? He was a lover and a follower of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at those, they left his way, Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab. Do you remember him? Do you remember them? No one. Everyone looks at the worst thing they used to do. They are dishonored and they are disgraced because they left Muhammad And me and you, we will leave this dunya. And right at the end, our honor and our izza will be limited to how we follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma iqfalina dhanubana wa kafirina sayyatina. Allahumma qida adab al-dunya wa adab al-akhira. Allahumma aqfir al-mu'minin mu'minat wa al-muslimin muslimat. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar wa akim salat.